house today and as you're coming in and finding your place let me just say uh it is one it is one beautiful lord's day is it not now those of us who don't like it to be too cool or something i'm sure we can always find something to talk about okay but let's talk about the goodness of the lord let me make a quick announcement or two this copy is a copy of uh names of children for the children's party uh I, it's going back to the back and uh there by the sound booth uh, needing names of the kids that'll be here age as well and the gender i brought this so to remind you that's on the evening of sunday uh the 22nd that only gives you about a week or so to to get those kids signed up so uh, please do that, and we'll all have those uh, children taken care of, okay? Uh, stand together with me, and let's pray as we do. Let's just make the, Lord's, uh, make the Lord's face shine this morning with our obedience. Father, thank you. Lord, you're so faithful. Thank you, Lord, that uh, this morning is just as Jeremiah described it. When he said, your mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Father, we're so grateful, Lord, to be a part of this Lord's Day. Also, Lord, to be a part of the fellowship here as we come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord that we might uh, uh, sing and we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless those, Lord, who are visiting with us this morning. I pray, God, that you'll uh, just make them feel at home among us. And, Lord, I just pray that it'll just be a great morning together. Bless the choir uh, as they sing, as they share from their hearts as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, it's not about the decorations. However, they are so beautiful. And again, we thank you, ladies, and perhaps some gentlemen, too. I know Tim helped that, that made it so beautiful for us. Makes it, makes it, uh, it's always easy to praise the Lord. But these decorations are fitting. So let's worship His Majesty. Majesty unto Jesus, we are glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, we have authority over from His throne unto His own, His and the praise. 
about a Christmas carol now. It came upon a midnight clear. We don't know what that night was like, except that we know that night was full of joy, full of hope. seated just a moment let me share a few prayer concerns with you and uh, after that we'll pray and have our morning offering as well we've been praying for many of you for weeks now and last evening as I began to look over my prayer list and I left it over there in my chair but as I began to look over it I began to count the blessings not just of what we ask for, but who God is beginning to touch and make some of you well again, okay? Uh, we want to stay faithful to the prayer needs. The Lord said that we ought to pray uh, consistently. Uh, he says that uh, not only in the Gospels, but in other places, we find Paul encouraging that as well, to pray without ceasing, okay? Do we have any special need this morning before we pray? Anyone? Anyone behind me? Debbie back there. Debbie, yes. Yes. Last night, um, and she had just got and a child with her, so it's a bad situation. The person is still alive, just need a Amen. Okay, one of her workers, <clears throat> you could hear her, had a, was in an accident last night, so... Praying that all of that will work out uh, quickly and fully. Yes, ma'am. Okay, unspoken requests. Many of you carry them with you as well. I know I do. Sometimes it's not that they're not large or they're small. It's just we can't talk about them all the time. So thank you for reminding us. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am.
Amen. Amen. We'll do. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. His dad. Aunt. I'm sorry. Thank you for helping me out there. Things sound greatly different. I apologize for missing that one. Anyone else? Ushers, you can move forward right now. Please come. Anyone else that we need to pray for? Yes. Okay. Uh, like I say, I had marked all of this in my uh, prayer list, and you see it sitting over there on my chair, but I'll get back to that, and we'll be faithful to call them by name again this evening, okay? Let's pray. Fa yes, I'm sorry, Brenda. Yes, yes, Miss Linda Bennett, uh, as her daughter was buried yesterday, we can only imagine what she's going through. Some of you have been there. However, pray for her and even the extended family in that case as well. And as my mind is on those other families that has have had death uh, this year, particularly in the holiday season, it's all magnified. So pray, pray for all of them as friends and church family as well. Father, thank you so much, Lord. Lord, it's a, it's a pleasure. It's a, it's a gift that you've given all of us to be able to approach thy throne of grace. Lord, we don't have to do that timidly. We do that as a child would call on his or her father. And Lord, I, I pray today that you have heard every request Lord, you'll not hear, but you'll also honor the request of those, Lord, who are speaking to you now. Lord, we pray in faith, believing. We pray also, Lord, uh, not out of um, selfishness of our heart, but seeking your will in all situations. Lord, the unspoken needs that uh, have been voiced this morning as well, by the raising of a hand, I pray, God, that you'll bless You'll guard all of those lives. Lord, as I moved around among the people this morning, each one would have their special uh, need or request in their heart. And I pray, God, that you'll hear and answer them as well. Lord, again, I pray that you would bless the tithe, the offering. Lord, you have blessed us so uh, bountifully. Lord, sometimes we... Uh, we fear that we can't give because there's a lack of abundance, but Lord, we're also reminded that we're to just give out of a cheerful heart. Lord, bless now as we continue on in this time of worship. Bless the offering, the gift, the tithe, and then also the continuance in our singing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>
Let's pray over the offering. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for these tithes and offerings to give this morning and use it and guide it and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles if you would like, follow along with me. We're going to be reading out of John chapter 1. That's the gospel of John now, chapter 1, okay? And we'll be reading uh, about the first 14 verses. I told you last week when we uh, began uh, uh, the December messages that John was the only gospel writer that we find that did not give us the nativity scene, okay? John did not give us a lot of detail about the birth of Jesus. Matter of fact, he gives hardly any detail. The normal, or might I say, the traditional Christmas story is not written in the Gospel of John. So, uh, with that in mind, if you look for it and you find 
a part of the Gospel of John that's appealing concerning the subject matter of the Christmas story, I sure would be glad to look at that and entertain it. However, uh, I am going to read uh, these verses, and I want to preach to you from the subject of that's why he came, okay? That's why he came. Uh, in my life, uh, pastoring particularly over the last 43 years that we've been able to do this, uh, I've been to a lot of places. My wife and I have made a lot of visits, been in a lot of homes and hospitals and various places to meet people where they were, try to meet a need they had, and maybe share Jesus with them. That's what we've been doing for those many years. However, from time to time, those visits turn out to be a little different. And uh, over the last many years, I've tried to call in any time we would be trying to make a visit. And trying to call uh, does a couple of things. Number one, uh, it makes sure you're home. It makes sure the time is right. That makes sure uh, that there will be no hindrances. But uh, also, it, it allows us to be better stewards there of time. And it uh, allows you to be a little more prepared. You know, uh, what did I say, 42, three years ago, I was pastoring in a rural church, and you could just get out in your truck or your car and ride through the rural community, and you see somebody sitting on a porch, you could stop and make a visit, and they loved it. However, it's a little different now. <laughs> People, uh, uh, their habits are a little different, and their needs are a little different. Matter of fact, I'm not saying they're less, they're sometimes greater. But uh, why we came back then is a little different uh, than it is now. I remember last year about this time, I had called a couple of my friends. Uh, I wanted to go by and see them. One lived here in town. Uh, another lived uh, at Scuffletown. And I said, well, I better call them before, especially before I drive that far. So I did. Uh, and it so happened he was not at home that time, but he called me back and was able to make that connection. I remember when I got there, uh, he said to me, he said, I had no idea why you were coming. And uh, I reckon that was the objective of that. I didn't call to tell you why I was coming. I was going to do that if I got to come, okay? Uh, but people began to be a little curious. Now, why are you coming? Uh, do you have good news or bad news? And the reality of it is we go for various reasons, do we not? Now, the Scripture tells us that Jesus came. And you know in the Bible, uh, there are quite a bit of verses that tell us about that's why He came, okay? You could probably name four or five of those. You might could even name more of those. Uh, however, I'll, I'll not attempt to preach every one of those things singularly. However, uh, we'll, we'll get to quite a few of them. You say, well, how long are we going to be doing this? Well... We're going to use it this morning and we'll use it again tonight. You say, well, why are you doing that? And I'll just simply tell you, the Spirit said, do it, okay? And rather than do it this morning and go somewhere tonight, we're going to speak to that same subject matter, okay? I remember one older couple. They were married. They were older. They probably were in their late 80s, uh, maybe 90. Uh, they lived outside of Blackshear on 121 going toward Bristol. And I remember visiting them, and uh, Debbie might get a kick out of this if she remembers, but... I could go there and I could visit that older couple and I could sit there an hour and then I'd get ready to pray and tell them that, you know, I had to move on, make other uh, stops. And the older fella, bless his heart, he said, what did you come for, a match? And... Uh, uh, I wanted to say, no, sir, I didn't come for a match. But if I spent an hour, hour and a half everywhere I went, I sure wouldn't see many people very often. But uh, I loved them, and uh, he, he was uh, one of those characters that... Uh, uh, you you meet once in a lifetime. He's both of them have gone on to be with the Lord. Let's see what uh, John says. Okay, and when we when I say let's see what John says, uh, let's see what the Lord says according to John, and we'll discover that in these verses. Okay, John chapter one verse one says, uh, "In the beginning was the Word." 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men might that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and, re and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14 says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If you were to take that passage and try to take it apart, and I don't mean tear it apart, I mean just take it and dissect the various sentences, you may find two or three different things that make you understand a little better that He didn't just merely come to be a baby in a manger outside of Bethlehem, but Jesus came with some specific purpose. Uh, you know, you may not reflect it, and I don't always reflect it, but what we do, or why we do, what we do, unbeknowing to us sometime, is because of purpose, okay? We seek to accomplish something in our life. The difference in a life and leaving a legacy is uh, that we have had uh, a goal in mind from the beginning. Well, the Scripture tells us here uh, that there was a man uh, by the name of John who came. Don't conflict him with the John that uh, we're reading uh, uh, the Gospel of John here. They are not the same Johns, okay? The John that the Scripture's talking about there was John the Baptist who made it very clear that he was not the one, okay? Matter of fact, John the Baptist of whom we're speaking right there about uh, just prior to his death when he was fixing to lose his head, uh, the Scripture said John the Baptist told two of his disciples, said, would you go and ask Jesus, are you the one or, or should we look for another? John the Baptist, I don't think, was full of doubt like we become sometime. John the Baptist was just desirous that he knew uh, that, it wa uh, that Jesus was the one uh, whom he had been promoting in his earth ministry. Now the scripture helps us to understand the realities of why Jesus came. It's not always easy uh, for us to see these pictures, but I'm going to try to help you today. I sometimes call this using your sanctified imagination, okay? And the reason I say that is not to declare anything uh, uh, lightly. It's simply to know that it's a little deeper than my human mind usually wants to try to think uh, and the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19, I believe it is, uh, uh, that we have the mind of Christ. Those of us uh, who have been born again. He said, the natural man receiveth not the things of, of God. He said, because those are spiritual and they must be spiritually discerned. Now with that thought in mind, let's look together and try to see some of these simple things. Uh, some of these uh, I will elaborate on. Others uh, we'll have to come back to uh, in a little uh, few more uh, days or weeks, okay? First of all, in this passage, it tells us that He came into His own. 
You know, uh, Israel had had prophets, they had had priests, uh, they had had kings uh, all through their nation's history. From the time they were a, uh, a singular kingdom till the time they became a, di uh, a divided kingdom. When they went to the ten tribes to captivity to the Assyrians, then when the Two tribes there, uh, the southern tribes, went into captivity in Babylon. What we learn is that they were one, okay? Although divided, they still were one. Now, the reality of that is Jesus... Uh, came unto his own. It was not that he did not have a specific purpose uh, to save the world and all those who would believe. It's just that he had a, a heavy heart that his people would come to know the Messiah, the one who had been promised. Uh, and as a result, the scripture tells us uh, that he came unto them and his own received him not. However, as many as would receive him... Uh, gave he them power to become the sons of God. We're looking there in verse number 10 and 11. Don't want to spend great time there because the, rea uh, the reasoning of that is because most all of these other th reasons that I help or hope to show you give us a clear understanding of why he came. Now Paul in 1st uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 says, uh, and I think or I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me in the ministry who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul would say that. Paul was not one of the original disciples. Paul had not pilgrimed with Jesus in his earthly ministry. Uh, Paul was not one of the understudies. However, Paul was a deeply, uh, he was a deeply religious man. He had gained a great uh, understanding of the ways of God. But yet he had not uh, been uh, privy and he had not been uh, one who would receive the Lord Jesus. Paul talks about doing things ignorantly. We can't plead that case no more, can we? Why? Because we're accountable. He just simply lets us know that he was a sinner and that uh, every other one of us uh, likewise uh, are sinners as well. In John chapter 1 verse 18, just a little further than I read to you in the beginning, it says there that no man man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Do you realize there's only one, there's only one satisfaction for the sins of of the world. There's only one uh, hope for you and your sin, and that hope there is none other than Jesus Christ uh, and His blood that satisfied the Father. However, let me remind you of a couple of things that go much further back than that. The Scripture said uh, those uh, many, maybe all, have at some point desired to see God. But he said no man was, uh, has seen God at any time. I reckon I could consider the closest someone came to see in God was when Moses saw him. You remember the Scripture tells us uh, uh, that Moses saw him one time as he was coming off the mount, but Moses only saw his backside. Oh, I can only imagine when Moses declares he had saw the backside of God, so he had saw God. Moses wore a, he, he had to wear a bag on his face. Why? Because he glowed so brightly. And he desired not that people begin to see that glory depart from him. Friend, let me tell you something. We're all going to see God one day. 
I know the scripture tells us that we're to serve him. Uh, why? Because uh, he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. However, let me remind you, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So one of the great reasons that Jesus came was to reveal to us God the Father. When you read the Bible, let me encourage you, especially when you get in the New Testament, when you read the Bible and you read about the stories of Jesus, you see the miracles of Jesus, uh, you see the mercies of Jesus, and also when you see the judgment of Jesus, remember one thing, you're seeing the Father. You know, if I could only try to describe to you the Father this morning, I could not do it justice. Because the Scripture says that no man has seen the Father, but we have maybe not seen Him, but we have saw Him declared before us in the life of Jesus. Now that verse that I read that from comes out of John chapter 14, verse number 9, when it said, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and you have not known me, Philip? And he asked that question. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Friend, I'm glad Jesus came, aren't you? You say, well, I haven't saw the Father. Well, let me tell you something. Begin to read the Scriptures consistently. And when you see Jesus especially in the Gospels and further there in some prophetic uh, ways there in the New Testament. You also see Jesus some ways in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, I was reading in the book of Daniel over the last couple of days in my daily Bible reading. And you realize that Jesus is uh, the fourth man in the fire? Wow, like unto the Son of God, the Scripture says. Friend, I want to tell you something. Jesus... Reveal to us the Father. You know, we sometimes use that word, and if we're not careful, we use it a little, uh, we use it a little loosely. You know, the Scripture tells us to be careful and not use the Lord's name in vain. It don't mean that we're cursing with His name. It says don't use it in vain. Don't use the Lord's name just casually. Why? Because God is so holy. And as a result of that, we know that Jesus came. Let's stick back and look at what Paul said. Not only do Jesus reveal the Father, but Paul said He came to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Did you know the Lord has only saved, in, uh, in, in the life of Jesus and since, there's only been one type of people Jesus could save. And that's sinners. You say, well, preacher, uh, I know some bad ones. Well, doesn't say Jesus came to save bad sinners. He said He came to save sinners. Now, Paul carries that a little further when he describes himself. He said that He came to save sinners uh, of whom I am chief. The thought came to me, well, the thought of the sermon's been there all week, but the thought came to me about sin. What is sin? You know, we've seen it. We read about it. We saw sin. It can be described as, uh, like David did in Psalm 51, it can, can be described uh, there as missing the mark. Sin, that's a definition of it. It's not a bad definition. Why? Because we all miss the mark, do we not? It's referred to as a transgression. Someone described a transgression once uh, as a high-handed revolt against holy God. It's like we would get in the face of God and say, Hey, God, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to do it anyway. Transgression. It's referred to as iniquity. David referred to sin as iniquity and. Uh, Psalm chapter 51, all oh, that slight uh, that we have in life. Sometimes it's not uh, always that sign that we have done something, but maybe we have thought something amiss. Friend, do you realize that sin is a very contagious disease? Matter of fact, it is so contagious that once Adam and Eve sinned, uh, the Lord said that it passed upon all men. 
for all have sinned. Now, I know sin makes us feel uncomfortable, but it shouldn't. The reason I say it shouldn't is because we don't have to live continuously nor eternally in our sins. Aren't we glad? Boy, that brings Jesus back in the picture, doesn't it? Why? Because Jesus came to seek and to save sinners. Now, folks, let me just say, without the blood, there is no remission of sins. We look at all the pretty red poinsettias, and I love them. But when I see those beautiful red leaves on the top, it reminds me so much of the blood of Jesus every time. Friend, I don't know about you, but I'm very grateful today that Jesus came. Not simply that we might be able to tell someone and celebrate a story called the Christmas story, and to do that every year continuously, but that we might recognize that Jesus came not for a not for a specific purpose for all, but He came for a specific purpose for me. Save my sin. You know, there are two kind of people. One kind is those who would say that, well, if I'm a sinner, I'm not a bad one. And then there are others who say, I am a sinner and I have been a terrible one. Friend, why don't we just admit what the Lord said? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, I know we're not celebrating Easter, but there can't uh, be the life of Jesus without recognizing the death of Jesus as well. Because for Him to satisfy God, He had to go to Calvary. But oh, that's not the end of the story. He likewise was resurrected on the third day. And because of Jesus and His life, we today can celebrate as believers whom Jesus said were the light of the world. He said we're no longer uh, just persons. We're the sons of God. Jesus gave us position, gave us power. And oh, my friend, he came to save us. Some are still trying. You're cleaning up. You're doing a good job. You're thinking, I'm going to tame this one day. No. I'd love to tell you you could, but you can't. Surrender your life to Jesus. He's the one then that will help you. He will help you clean up those areas that you desire to clean up. Friend, I want to tell you, as a church, we don't even come to save sinners. We're not able. But as a result of the, as a result of the life of Jesus, we can be saved. He not only came to save sinners or reveal God to us and came to save sinners. Uh, you know, there's a specific cre uh, scripture in John chapter 6, verse 38 that says this. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of Him who sent me. You know what He came for? To do His Father's will. I don't know if you've noticed it. There's this commercial on TV. It's not vulgar. It don't have anybody half naked on it. It's all right. It's that commercial where that uh, young man who I think is the quarterback on the football team comes to the sideline and his father steps up there and says, why are you over here? Get back in that game. Fulfill your dream. He said, Dad, that's your dream. My dream is something else. So, you know, I'm only saying that. Sometimes we're trying to do somebody else's will. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful from the beginning of the life of Jesus, the earthly life I'm talking about, okay? As we begin to look at His earthly life, it is very, uh, what we can know of Him is very scarce. 
You know, we find him uh, being dedicated in the temple. We find him going back for his bar mitzvah in the temple. And uh, they left him there overnight and had to go back and get him. Now, I know some of you have been tempted to leave your kids somewhere, but you can't do that. Jesus teaching the doctors, teaching the teachers. You know what he was doing? Doing the Father's will. Well, let me tell you something about Jesus. When you read about Him in the Gospel, when you see a miracle that He did, when you see blind eyes open, and when you see the deaf begin to hear and the dumb begin to talk, uh, what you see is you see the will of the Father in those cases. Jesus said, I came not to do mine own will. The best proof case of that I can find is before Jesus ever went to Gethsemane, you know, He was praying and He was saying, Father, if there be a way, let this cup pass from Me. Nevertheless, not My will, but Thy will be done. Friend, Jesus... Why you celebrate Him this Christmas? Why don't we just fix in our mind that the reasons that He came are not selfish reasons. He didn't want to come down here and just see what was going on. He could see that from where He was. He came for specific purposes. The first and not less of which was to reveal God to us. The second and even no less is to seek and to save sinners of whom Paul said he was chief. Then the scripture tells us Jesus came to do the Father's will. Friend, do you understand the Father's will? I could, I could, I could probably answer that for you. The Father's will sometimes is very hard to discern. Sometimes we think we figured it out, and about that time we confused again. In 1988, I felt the Lord's uh, release from where we were serving, and we had been there seven years, and there was a group of people out of Florida who had came, and they had the urgency to call us to be their pastor I told them I said I'll let you know in two weeks Lord that was the craziest thing I'd ever said in my life that was the most miserable I'd ever been in my life you say why I really wanted to do the Lord's will and I had a wife and two kids involved and we'd never never went that far I'd go lay down at night and sleep and I'd tell Debbie I don't think we got to go Wake up the next morning, hey, honey, I've got a bad problem. What is it? Well, I think we need to go. (laughs) I couldn't last two weeks, friend. When God speaks and you know His will, just do it. Do I tell you it's easy? No. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when He was considering God's will and even knowing it, The Scripture tells us that His sweat became as drops of blood. Why? I think He was considering that that was fixing to come upon Him, the Father's will. Friend, we could go on and on, and we won't try to do it all this morning. We'll do some of these tonight. Why would you preach a sermon uh, in, you know, in two stages? Well, you'll sit down in front of a television set and it comes to the end, it said, to be continued, doesn't it? You hang on there like, oh, I can't wait till next week. Jesus, why did He come? Did He have purpose in His coming? Absolutely. Did He have people in His mind when He came? Absolutely. Absolutely. I close with this one. It comes out of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. It says, For even hereunto you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in His steps. I've had people come to me at various times. They, they were very troubled in spirit. 
Some of them, many of them were believers. They had surrendered their life to the Lordship of Jesus, been baptized. They, they were serious about being obedient to God. But you know, they just couldn't quite get the concept of how to do this and who to follow. Man, this, this, this particular passage answers that. Because it said, He leaves us an example that we should follow His steps. Have you ever followed somebody or thought that would be the right person to follow? And before the end, that person might have slipped or fallen. That person might have stumbled. They used to call it falling off the wagon. And I'm making no light, slightness of that. For let me tell you, when we follow one another, we sometimes follow the wrong fork in the road. Amen. But following Jesus' steps. Oh, how wonderful. It doesn't get any brighter or clearer than when Jesus here, Peter gives us this wonderful truth when he says Christ suffered for us. And he said, there's an example in the life of Jesus. We should follow in his steps. Let me tell you somebody to follow and he will never lead you down the wrong road. Jesus. Don't follow me. Don't follow your best friend. Thank God for their comfort. Thank God for their care. But follow Jesus. I could go on and on with the realities of the life of Jesus. But the Scripture said, His earthly life is a pattern for our living today. Oh, preacher, so much has changed since Jesus was on the earth. There's so much change. But let me tell you one thing that has not changed. That's the principles. Someone said methods are many, principles are few. Methods are always changing. Principles never do. Friend, when we want to be right, and right with God, and right where He wants us to be, follow Jesus. I'm going to get a little close to the row here just a moment. When we follow Jesus, our lives are made simpler. When we follow Jesus, the churches where we worship are likewise made more loving and caring. When we follow Jesus, we don't look so much at the way things used to be. He told us to look at things the way they are. And friend, I'll tell you something. Jesus never fails. He came. You say, Preacher, how you know He came? I told you last week why I believe the Christmas story. And one of the reasons I believe the Christmas story is because of the saints who follow Him. Friend, I don't need no more proof today. I just need to live the proof that others may know. As you bow your heads with me this morning, do you understand just a little bit about why Jesus came? He came. He didn't come necessarily that we would set aside a day once a year to celebrate His birth. That's a good reason, but He didn't come for that purpose only. Jesus came. That He'd reveal God to us. That He would save us. That He would leave us an example that we should follow. Oh, the Scripture reminds us. The hymn writer wrote many years ago, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how 
know I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. The name of Jesus. Father, oh, how, how we desire to love you more every day. When we, when we look into the Word and we see the faithfulness that you have had, Lord, you, you were present in creation. Jesus was there with the Father and the Spirit. Lord, you eternally exist. But Lord, let us not forget you're coming back. You died, you were resurrected, you ascended, but you're likewise coming back. Let us long for Jesus. Now Lord, let this word resonate in the minds of all of us. Not just them or some, but all of us. Lord, there might be somebody here today that really is desirous to be a child of the King, a child of Jesus. Lord, I pray they'd not leave this morning without taking someone, including me. And Lord, you, you know my availability to help them through that process. Go with us, guide us, bring us back this evening in the timing of the Lord to be able to share these great truths. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you in the Lord's house today. Hope you can be back this evening.